Okay, let's continue. Um, so now we have a determination of order, right, using the half-life method. Earlier on, we were talking about uh, determination, determining the order of reaction using the, the table method, right, the initial rate. So now we're going to look at uh, the half-life method. So this rate of reaction, right, we can obtain it by monitoring the concentration of either a reactant or a product. All right, but first we got to stop the reaction or slow it down drastically by adding a quenching agent. All right, quenching agent. All right, what does the quenching agent normally do? It removes one of the reactants uh, at uh, a particular fixed time interval, and then we can carry out titration. All right, so uh. We're going to give you a couple of examples, acid catalyzed uh, reaction and base catalyzed hydrolysis. So basically, we mix the reactants of known concentration and then we take out a portion of the reaction sample and we quench it. We stop the reaction. All right, so uh, quenching method varies. So sometimes we can add the whole. Uh, the whole uh, reaction mixture into, we can plunge it into ice cold water, all right? We, we lower significantly the temperature and then we slow down the rate of reaction. Or we can actually, for acid catalyzed reaction, add in a base to neutralize the acid. All right, so and then we titrate uh, with the appropriate reagents and then we plot the results. All right, so as you can see for the result analysis, uh, if T half is constant, right, then the order of reaction is one. All right, since the volume of acid that was used to titrate uh, is directly proportional to the concentration of the OH minus still present. All right, so for in the case of the titration using thiosulfate, Okay, so you find that uh, over time, right, uh, the rate with respect to iodine is constant. All right, so since the amount of iodine is like a decreasing, so the volume of thiosulfate required is also decreasing, but it's at a constant rate. All right, so this means that the order of reaction with respect to iodine is going to be zero. Okay. So then again, we can look at the volume measurement of the gaseous product. So if you actually mix in uh, known quantities, and then basically the gas evolved will be recorded at regular intervals. All right. So, so in this case, we are measuring the product. Okay. So these are some examples of what we can measure. Okay, we can also measure the mass, all right? The mass uh, which was lost over time. We can also measure the pressure. Uh, of all the measurement, I think this measurement is kind of like the hardest to do in our lab because you need a manometer. So you monitor the pressure of the N2O5 gas And then you realize that the T half is the same, all right? Meaning that it's constant. Okay, part A asks us to use the ideal gas equation to explain how the partial pressure is related to the concentration. Uh, so what you can do is you just rearrange it and you can see that your pressure is actually directly proportional to the concentration. Okay, and then uh, because our half-life is constant, the order of reaction with respect to N2O5 is actually 1. All right, so the rate is equal to the rate constant times partial pressure of N2O5. Okay, uh, 
last of all, we can actually monitor the order of reaction uh, based on the change in the color. So the most common one that you guys uh, probably have encountered is actually your iodine, right? Where it is actually uh, brown in color, right? Reddish brown, brown, all right? And then the color intensity is directly proportional to the concentration. So the rate of reaction can also be measured by plotting the graph of color intensity against time. Okay, um, what happens if we cannot determine the concentration using the above methods? All right, so what we can do, for example, in the to determine order of reaction with respect to propanol, right? We can repeat the reaction with different concentration of propanol keeping the other two reactants constant and we monitor the change in I2 over time and then any change in the rate will be due to propanol concentration. Okay, to determine the order of reaction with respect to H+, we repeat the pH with different pH values using buffers uh, while keeping I2 and propanol concentration constant. Then again, we measure the change in I2 with time. Okay. So any change in rate will be due to the H plus concentration. 